This video is about error analysis when you're making a prediction and comparing the prediction to a measured value. So let me show you what I mean. Let's say I do an experiment where I've got this pipe, a certain radius and a certain length, and what I want to do is I want to figure out how much air can flow through this each second of the pipe. So I'm kind of looking at volume over time, what's called the flow rate. So the change in pressure times pi times the raised to the fourth divided by 8 times mu times L. Alright, so you don't know what the formula means, and that's fine, you don't need to know. But here's what I do in the lab. So I go and I set everything up and I make a prediction. So in my prediction, I'm going to predict the flow rate. And I'm going to take the, the pressure, the difference in pressure, times pi, times the diameter, or, the, or sorry, the radius raised to the fourth power, divided by the, all that stuff in the bottom that I measured. So everything on the right-hand side of the equation I measured. And I predicted that I should have a flow rate of 15 meters, per, uh, meters cubed per second. And then I do the lab, and I actually go some other process of measuring the flow rate, however I'm going to do that. And when I measure it in the lab, I get 13 meters cubed per second. So I have a difference here. I can go through and find the usual percent error, predicted value minus measured divided by predicted times 100, and so I get this 13.3 percent. But now I want to figure out, okay, what would my other measurements have to be in order to get this wrong value? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my equation and I'm going to rearrange it for one of the variables I want to investigate. So remember, the measured flow rate was 13 in the, the activity. So here's my flow rate equation. Everything's all set up. This is what I predicted, the equation I used when I predicted it. And there's the measured flow rate. And the problem is my prediction and my measure don't match. So I want to figure out which of these variables, L or R, you know, what kind of mistake I could have or what's, what's, where's the error. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my flow rate equation. I'm going to rearrange the variable so that L is all by itself because I want to look at what happens to the length of the pipe. In other words, how much must my measurement of the length of the pipe be off in order to give me this wrong value? So then I put in all the values that I have. So everything in blue, I got the first time. But the 13, the, stuff, the letter and the number in red, that's the value I measured in lab. So because that was measured in lab, I'm going to put it in as if it was an acceptable value. And then I'll calculate the length. And when I calculate the length, I get basically 37 centimeters, or 0.374 meters. Well, in the lab, I actually physically measured the length to be 0.325 meters. So that was a difference of 0.05 meters, or about 5 centimeters. So in other words, in order to get this value of 13 meters per second cubed, I must have mismeasured my measurement by 5 centimeters in order for that to happen. Well, I didn't mismeasure it by 5 centimeters. That's way more than, than the error that I would have had, significant figures or plus or minus error, however you want to look at it. That's way more. So that wasn't the only error. So how did you write this up in the lab report? For the error analysis section, you would say that you're looking at the pipe length, except you'd spell length correctly. And you'd say the pipe length would have to be 0.05 meters longer, so that's my value, if it was the only source of error, so the only source of error. It's too big to be the only source of error. So there's no way that I have that kind of error of 5 centimeters, so that's not the only source. Then I'm showing the formula that's rearranged, the numbers that I use to calculate my values, and then, of course, the change of lengths would give me the 0.05 meters. So how does all this kind of work? Well, if I can think about this like an English paper, first thing I'm going to have is my title. So this is telling me, the reader, I'm looking at the pipe length. And then I'd probably have my... my uh, main sentence, topic sentence. The pipe length would have to be 0.05 meters longer than measured if it was the only source of error. So that's my title up there, topic sentence. And then I'd have all the supporting materials. So I got the equation rearranged for the variable, I've got the equation with the numbers and units and your measured value in there, and then I've got this new value that I calculated. And finally at the end, if you're finishing up your little um, paragraph, you'd restate what you did in the beginning. And that's what I'm doing here with math. So the difference from the actual measured value is the final value down there at the bottom. 